Hearing how God stroked your forehead in the 1970s, how does this help anybody? So if he truly does have the gift of healing, don't you think he'd want to start Obviously. with healing and end with healing? Obviously. Opposed to, I didn't think there'd be so many after the eighth person. <laughs> You know, this is what used to happen to me when I was young. <laughs> You're gonna sow your seed for your future. Mm. Make it out to no. Benny. For your future. It's, it's for, David so for, for his future. Right. Hi everybody, welcome to Hit, Hit the, the Bar. Bar. I'm Steve Kozar. Paulette Kozar. We're sitting here with Ginger and Kiko. It's been a while since we made a video. Kiko's gotten his weight up yeah we've had him now for three months and he's at dog obedience class so hopefully well we took him to the first class last <laughs> night and he had a big f for failure <laughs> but that's our our fault but he urinated very well all over the place all over the place <laughs> marking as it were yeah anyway that's not what we're going to talk about remember so today is our mm -hmm. two-year anniversary sort of it's not exactly to the day but we did a video last February, I think, 22nd, which was our first year anniversary. And it was, it was on Benny Hinn. Yep. Because our very first episode, which I actually don't recommend they watch. It's not no, very good. not we... very good. <laughs> but that's okay. If you want to watch it because you just want to, it's we're not, not going to hinder you. No, we're not going to hinder you. <laughs> it is still up. It's still up. But we are so much more polished now. Oh, yeah. We're professionals. Yeah, we got different dogs. I mean, just... <laughs> <laughs> we haven't killed these two off yet. <laughs> Yeah, so, we won't go there. That is not funny. It is not. I am offended. You either laugh or cry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so shout out to all of our campuses all over the world. Hey, it's been a while since we've been here, but we are excited to be here. It's our two-year anniversary. And hey! And how many subscribers do we, we have now? We now have 50,000 subscribers. <laughs> 50,000 members of our campuses all over the world. All over the world. So we never tell people to subscribe. No, but you should. Don't subscribe. Don't <laughs> ring the bell. Don't push any of those buttons. Don't ding the dong. Don't ding the dong. <laughs> don't even push the like button. This is reverse psychology. Oh, it's working. This might this might help our It might help our dog when we're trying to teach him something. <laughs> so what we're going to do for our two-year anniversary thingy is we're going to look at some Benny Hinn stuff. And we actually looked at a video last night. Oh, boy. And it's a we, healing, it's a healing service. We watched something. It's a healing service. Did we watch another one before that? Yeah, one? we watched the one. That, yeah, it's something. It's something. Yeah. But I do want to mention the old that man's still at it. <laughs> he had his seventieth birthday celebration, and uh, I took. <gasps> oh, screen. we could have gone. No, actually, honey. Why? Well, there was a, a variety of tickets available. Why couldn't I sit next to him? Because that would have cost $5,000. <laughs> no, he had a whole string of layers, you know, from 5000 to 2500 The to closer 1, you get to the anointing, the, the more anointed, you pay. Yeah. yeah, the more you pay. Yeah, it was amazing how much money he was trying to charge people. That's something. And, you know, all the how benefits. How full was that uh, I, birthday I, party? I do not know. He didn't do his homework on the uh, aftermath Well, of it. I, I, I mean, they didn't make a video of the, of the birthday party. Why think. not? I'm not Benny Hinn. You think that they would? You now, know, for there, all the people who couldn't attend because they couldn't afford it, but would want to get some kind of anointing. There are some people who <laughs> said uh, that they appreciated him so much. And the special place that Jesus has in your life and in the healing ministry mm. and all of the time, all of the miracles, oh, yeah. and the, countless, and all of the countless people, people. That countless you have trained. In your ministry mm. to Goodbye. carry the healing power of God around the world, mm. we honor you, sir. Yeah, and we hold you. Okay, okay so so Benny Hinn has trained m many people to who heal else? others, just like himself. Who else is a big fan of Benny Hinn? Oh, we'll here. find out. You know, I've already passed that. I'm pushing seventy four now, and I'm telling you, it Andrew better. Womack. It's, it's not better Womack. Better. And I believe the same is for you. So I just wanted to wish Where's you a happy birthday. Cowboy so hat. God bless you. The best is yet to come. Yeah. In the early years of your life. Now, this guy is the who leader, is John Kilpatrick, who was the leader of the church that where, where the Brownsville revival took place. And he is not a bright man. Where is he now? He moved away from that church because they <laughs> had a split and it went down the toilet and they ran out of money. And he said, I'm going to start a new church. I'm not going to deal with that old church. Because they don't have any money anymore. Well, they built this giant building when they had all the people coming from around the world. Yeah. And they went into debt, and then the revival petered out like they always do. Always. And then the church has been in debt ever since. So always. he skipped town and started a new church. And let them all deal with their own yeah. problem with not having money. And you got the uh, Pat Robertson's son who's looking... <sighs> now, then there's this guy, 
not this guy, but this guy right here. You get to eat from the fruit of your labor for mm. the rest of your life. He's, He's eating just fine, eating. Bill. He's eating at the best <laughs> restaurants. Don't worry about him. Here we go. Benin. Hello there, my dear friend, Benny. My goodness. Hmm. There's a rumor going on. You're turning 70. <laughs> I just want to congratulate and honor you and declare the absolute blessing of the Lord over your life. He declared I the absolute that. blessing of the Lord over his life. It's got to happen It's got to happen he now. He declared it. He declared it. So there's a, there's a little precursor to some of the people who That's are something. big fans of Benny But Hinn. they're not there that night? Well, maybe Bill He Johnson. could have afforded he it. He could have afforded it. That's for sure. Maybe he was at his own little toasting of I, his own I'm pretty sure that he's got his own little apostolic world of Reformation's things going on. happening. <laughs> yeah. So what we're going to do is, um, by the way, check out the framework if you haven't yet. Yes. This is our friend Jake Elliott's yep. new channel. I'm, I'm trying to do an interview with him, and he lives in Australia, and he's either Opposite in Australia of the world. or in yeah. having a really good internet connection where we can do a good interview has it's been hard. difficult so She's far. She's falling off. But the framework is the name of his channel, and okay. uh, Jake knows a lot. Yeah. He really knows a lot. Now, so what do we have here? It says right here, Healing Service Live in Orlando. This was... So is this what we're going to be looking at? Not his birthday. No, we're not going to look at his birthday. The birthday was springboard the birthday on was introducing just, just who a, this man is. It's a wide variety of subject matter. We're just kind of skipping and jumping around. Seeing who, who the plethora of people the who plethora. are blessing him. Okay. Would you say I have a plethora of piñatas? A what? A plethora. Do you even know what a plethora is? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> you have a plethora. Jefe. What is a plethora? Why, guapo? Well, you told me I have a plethora. And I just would like to know if you know what a plethora is. So this is what I want to point out that I find amazing. How amazing is it? It's so amazing that, that we we're going to talk about it tonight. We're going to talk about it. All and right. by the way, if you haven't watched our channel before or these particular videos, hit the bar means we hit the space bar to stop the guy and talk about what was said. If you don't like people interrupting the video and interrupting each other. Just watch it first. This is not the video for you, no. my friends. And, and you know, I've had people say, well, why do you laugh? <laughs> I'm like, well, you either laugh or you cry. You either laugh or you cry. <laughs> it's serious. I mean... We should have that on our t-shirts. Yes, I like that. No, it's not that funny. No. But it works. So, um... <clears throat> so this is a healing service. Now, okay. what do you think you would see in a three... Hour and 20 minute healing service. At some point in that three hours and 20 minutes. At least 300 people healed. You'd see some. One, one person uh, every six, every minute. I mean, if you got, you got three hours and 20 yeah. minutes. You should have at least you two should have, people. You should have at least maybe an hour or two of yeah, healing. Right. Maybe really more like three hours and 20 minutes might be Because if you have that filler. gifting, wouldn't you want to heal everyone? Right. Because if God gave you that gifting, why would you even be here? Why wouldn't you just go to the hospital? And heal people instead well, of charging people to come see you. I'm sure there was a charge to this, wasn't there? Or is it a is it a free offering afterwards? I'm sorry. I forgot to turn my phone off. Brandon Kimber just texted me. We're working on stuff behind the scenes. <laughs> behind the scenes. I'm in front of the scenes. By the way, thank you, Valerie, for sending us treats. Yeah, do that part. I am. Valerie McKenna. You're very sweet, and we really appreciate that, and we are going to dig into these tonight. Oh, yeah. Get your snacks, folks. She said, I know you like a variety of things. <laughs> yeah, she sent this a long time ago, and we even had a chance to make a new video, so... Yes, we haven't, but we're not going to go there, because my husband said we shouldn't go there, because we've been too busy and sick. But anyway... Well, I yeah, I said we shouldn't eat the snacks before the video. No. Because... We got Swedish fish. Yeah, once we got started, they'd be all gone. We got Skittles, peanuts. I'm going to go with the Cheez-Its. Oh, I like Cheez-Its. Okay. You, you got to be gluten-free, so the Cheez-Its will have to be for me. Gluten-free for me, but I'm going to do the white cheddar and the spicy queso. So, you know why we eat while we watch these? We're kind of like the dog. To get the dog to do something they don't want to do, you got to give him some food. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do. We don't want to really watch this because it's painful, so we eat. I have a whole entire YouTube channel that forces me to do something on a daily basis that I do not want to do, which is watch videos of bad preachers giving horrible sermons and mm -hmm. teaching. And then after I watch them with him, he looks at me and says, 
See why I'm in a bad mood? Yes. I'm like, oh, great. Thank you, dear. This, uh, what we're going to show you, and we're not going to show the whole thing, but I, I was just letting it play last night, and she was like, oh, well, this guy gets to the point. He just goes on and on. That's really what I want you to see. He is mo more than anything, just like all these guys, I really see them. Especially the older they get, the more they talk about themselves. In the old days. The old days. All of them. And that's, you know, you young hours. people don't remember, but I'm going to talk about it mm -hmm. anyway. But that's, that's their job. Their job is really, it's almost like they're speech makers who, who get on stage and they are. You should have been there. <laughs> they're doing a form of entertainment with a, with a gloss of spirituality on top and they get paid really well. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get this started. There is no music. This is actually three hours and 20 minutes of just him. Mm, there's music. There's the background piano oh, playing. Oh, that's true. And the yeah. organ. I heard it. I know it. I got to turn it up. So glad. Listen. We, it's I really quiet. Okay, I, hear it. I don't know why it's so okay. quiet. I think it's going to get louder. Catherine ah. Truman Service. And See? Thick they had to fix the... Red face. Popcorn. Real red face. Looked like he had been in the sun. It looked like he had a suntan or just a lot about? of red. Doesn't matter. Nothing <laughs> negative, just beautiful complexion. And he looked like 85 to 90. But he had but no he wrinkles. Looked young, like young. He looked and like 85 to 90. But he looked young. Smile on his face. <laughs> He's hitchhiking. We're all wondering, what is this old man doing on a highway with nothing around but cornfields? That's all you saw is corn everywhere. And uh, this little man, he was, I don't know, five feet something, with his finger like that. So we stopped. <laughs> so we put the window down, and he says, can you please give me a lift? I need to go somewhere. Well, we all look like, you know, there's nowhere to, 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 you know, we're all like this. So Lorraine says, I'll never forget it, she says, well, sorry, and she kind of says something to him about, we wish we could do it, all this. Michelle says, now we take off. Michelle says, listen, let's stop. Two of us get out of the car. You give him what uh, you know, some ride, and you just don't hear good preaching like this anymore. <laughs> you just come back and pick us up what? with young people sitting on the floor everywhere. And what I was one of them. What are you talking about? Doesn't matter. We'd all go out on Young Street and Bloor Street, <laughs> witnessing to people mm. that were getting healed on the streets. Back in the old days, saved on the streets, and those kids, the majority came out of the drug culture, so they didn't look exactly like this, you know. And neither did I look like this either. I have long hair too, but I never did drugs, thank God, or my father would have killed me. I was afraid of my dad. My daddy was six foot three. If he ever caught us smoking, it's over. So I never smoked, <clears throat> I never drank, never did drugs, because I knew my dad would shining. Jonathan, shining like an angel, were all mesmerized by that man who spoke about the love of God. It was a real move of God. Miracles, healings all the time. So, he's telling us about something in the past. Mm -hmm. We don't really know what's going on, and you said it doesn't really matter. Well, I'm, I'm actually not being fair. If I wanted to be fair, I would try to give you... He's talking about when he was first... A Christian in the 70s, early 70s, and the young people and the movement and what was happening. So, before he became this power evangelist slash he yeah. healer, and so he's telling us all the good stories about way back when and where he was. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. There was a guy that came from somewhere India, I think it was, with a healing ministry. We all were doing this while when 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 that man showed up. He was a very soft-spoken man. I can just see, see his face. That move shook Canada. We had some of the most amazing... Oh, dear Lord. Um, the people that came to minister to us. Derek Prince, Lorne Cunningham. People like that came to that church. 
The good old days. Did he mean Lauren Green? <laughs> You won't get it. Bob Mumford, uh, all the biggies of that day. Imagine the impact it had on a young guy like me. And then I go from there to Miss Kuhlman. But that move stopped in 1974 because of a wrong teaching called mashed potatoes. I know it doesn't make sense to call it teaching that. It was a te- wasn't that when the hippie movement started? The Jesus movement? The mashed potato. Okay, isn't that when the Jesus movement started? So he's saying that all of that wonderful outpouring ended in 74. When did the Jesus movement start? When did it start? Yeah, when did it start? Well, roughly 67 at the very, very Until... earliest. Explo 72 was kind of the peak. Okay. So 1974, forget it. If you weren't in... Well, I think he's talking about the shepherding movement, I think, because Derek Prince and uh, Bob Mumford and a handful of others, this was a very rigorous, charismatic movement that actually um, John Weaver is one of the uh, academic writers who's written about the New Apostolic Reformation, and he claims that it was the shepherding movement that failed so poorly or it failed with such an extent that it really changed people in that world to say, we got to do something really different than this. And the big difference is there's no top-down hierarchical kind of uh, really rigid organizations anymore. They're they're loosely knit. So like there's the Cheyenne move uh, <clears throat> group, which used to be C. Peter Wagner's thing. Then there's the Chuck Pierce. But that's Chuck all top-down. They're not all exactly the same, and, and they're not all top-down. They actually are... Explain me what you mean by top-down, then. Top-down means that the guy at the top is completely in charge. Now, Chuck Pierce is that way. His leadership role, if you don't know Isn't Chuck... Isn't Bill Johnson? No. Not within the entire movement. Hmm. People follow him because they want to. And if you don't want to follow him, you're welcome to go. In the shepherding movement, they were actually really controlling of everybody. Hmm. Like, who are you going to marry? Where are oh, you going to wow. live? Which, okay. which job are you so going to take? that's the difference. Yeah. So it was very, very controlling of people. And, and that's what he was in. I'm, I'm not sure. But the men that he mentioned yes. were the leaders of that movement. Oh, okay. So that might be what he's referring to. I think the shepherding movement didn't end in 74, though. I thought it went until the late 70s, early 80s. Right. So he might be talking about something that came before that. Teaching on submission. They, they, they taught that you need to submit to your elders, and they went too far with it there and killed it. That beautiful move of God was so precious, led by a couple who were not pastors, but they thought they need to bring a pastor. That was the biggest mistake they made. They, they, they brought a pastor who was dynamic, dynamic in his preaching and teaching. He was probably, I would say... One of, of, of the most dynamic I had heard in that day. Nobody could teach on Hebrews like that man. Those are the but he days. believed in Because uh, he made the coffee. <laughs> and he did not believe <laughs> in in what we believe in, in about Israel. He, he was a, a what, replacement theology. And nobody knew it. He killed that move. Mm. Now he's teaching that we are Israel. I remember Lorraine Tanman, that sweet that sweet lady. He messed her up so bad. She said, "I am. I no longer read the Old Testament because I don't understand it, because he was saying it's like the you know Valley of the Dry Bones is the church, all that stuff." Yeah, actually, I believe that. He destroyed that that move in a year. Organize it, they kill it. The Holy Spirit does not like to be fenced in. Mm, there you no go. Box. No box. I learned one thing about him. Never build a fence around the Holy Spirit. Don't just keep He'll him in the Bible, in other words. the fence and go somewhere else. If you try to fence him in, you lose him. <laughs> so we have... It sounds, like, it sounds like he's at the dog training thing. <laughs> you try to fence him in, you lose him. <laughs> We saw that last time. have night. to pray to that that God Almighty will protect this move. <clears throat> will you promise to do that? Okay, so we're 33, almost 34 minutes into this. He's probably going to start healing people pretty soon. Oh, right? yeah. Because this is a healing meeting. 
in the in the video that came the day before, and these are all live. He's doing them on the fly. He's not making them and then editing them and having them put up after being edited. Mm -hmm. He's actually making most of his videos now as live videos. In case you didn't know what that is, I've made a few so far. They don't fall on the homepage where all the other videos are. You have to go to the tab at the top of the YouTube channel where it says live. So sometimes there are videos that are right there. They just were made the day you're looking, but they're not on the homepage. They're under mm -hmm. the live tab. Uh, but he said, hey, join me tomorrow for a healing meeting. I'm in prayer. Let me see your hands. Okay, so we need it. America needs it. America needs what got me because I was convinced he was Catholic. This lady here, she is like the she's like the biggest Benny Hinn fan in the world. She wants so desperately to get his attention, be seen by him, and he does everything to avoid her. Yeah. <laughs> what really got me? I was in big shock when my father told me that even Mary was Jewish. I thought for sure Mary was Catholic. Come on, please. Because we prayed to Mary every morning. Hail Mary, full of grace, all that. Because I went to a Catholic school. I went to Catholic Mass. I, we, we're not Catholics. We're Greek Orthodox. But the best schools in Israel are Catholic schools. Tough. Boy, they were tough, those people. Those nuns. <laughs> worse than the men. Do you know that he tells everybody that his dad was the mayor? Of what? Of the, of the I forgot which city in Israel. but That's where he's from? Mm-hmm. Yeah, as a boy, they came over to America. Oh. There's absolutely no record of his dad being a mayor of any town anywhere, let alone the one that he claims. And why does that matter? Because the monks people were shouldn't lie. Than the, than the nuns. Man, they would whip us. And I mean whip. Like whip with a whip. So, that's the guy just filling time. Mm. Horse whips, they use them in class. Today you call that abuse. <laughs> Back then, they called it discipline. Oh, damn it. Anybody grew up Catholic? Want to get down? Oh, bless your darling hearts. You also went to a tough school. Bless your hearts twice. But in Israel, they used whips, not, not just, you know, sticks. And those sticks would kind of do this, you know. They were reed, whatever you call them. Pardon? You remember that? Anyways, okay, so 40 minutes in. Coming. The healing's probably right around the corner. Moscow. The, 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 the stadiums were jammed mm. when I was there. Back in the day. We had thousands outside. <laughs> Back the in the day, good old days. I went out with a bullhorn and preached the gospel to Russian people outside. That's hard to believe since you don't preach the gospel right now. <laughs> at the stadium in Moscow. And at that time called Leningrad, which they turned to St. Peter, Petersburg. Anyways... I preach in those both of these cities with thousands in and out. They love Jesus with all their hearts. So let's not shut our hearts towards them because of the war. Because God Almighty is bigger than that. So will you promise that you will pray <laughs> for Russia, Ukraine, and Europe that God will intervene? No European war. Say amen. amen. And finally, healing. China. Oh, there China. he is. There she is. You, you, you need to pray for China and the people of China and the leaders of China mm -hmm. and especially the church inside China. Mm. Because I think it's important we understand. Oh. I don't know if I should talk about this, but years ago, the yeah. Chinese government invited me to come to Beijing. I was hosted by the government. It was Paul Crouch, Pat Robertson, and myself. And we were invited separately. <clears throat> I, was, I was hosted in the People's Hall mm -hmm. for dinner. I have pictures to prove it. Mm -mm. I'm sure this is a great story. She but found your coffee really beans. Close. That was the, the advice. She said, I would tell the whole, the whole church, no nation is stronger than its spiritual is forces, control. meaning... Okay, 47 minutes, now the... Healing's going to begin. Well, the keyboard's playing. That means the healing must be coming soon. Yeah, the keyboard. Only the church has power over those forces. So in your hand, in your life, yeah. there's amazing power that can change the world. What about healing it's people? It's called prayer. Lift your hands and thank him for the privilege he gave us. We give you the praise. 
give you all the glory. The Lord, minister to your people tonight around the world. And do some healing. I'll give you the praise. Yeah. Quit interrupting. Let there be glory and honor and praises. <clears throat> Glory and honor to Jesus. Yeah. Always just Jesus. Music. Come on. Oh. Let there be glory and honor Whoa. and praise. How could you forget this? Glory and honor I guess I blocked it out. How many minutes are we in now? Glory oh, wow. I turned it down. Oh. Okay, so we only had about uh, eight minutes, I think. <clears throat> A music? Mm -hmm. Good. We at least can relate it to something we know. So now he's going to probably start healing people. Right? Or we praise him. Why do we praise him? For his greatness. It says, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. So... It's each to praise because we can understand greatness. For example, uh -huh. when I was in Switzerland, yeah. I was in Luzon, and we took a... <sighs> Another story. And the We're minute not... <coughs> you have a revelation of God, mm. you know, I really need to share this with more than just young people. Mm-hmm. Because I want you to be real worshipers. Because without worship, there is no change in your life. Without worship. Mm -hmm. I'll say more about this in just a second. In Psalm 62, verse 1, it says, Truly my soul waiteth upon God. Mm. From him cometh my salvation. Here we go. We finally have some scripture. Yeah, he's going to talk about waiting. This is the first time we have scripture. Yeah, well, it's only been one hour and five minutes. <laughs> so here we see that David made a decision. Truly my soul waiteth upon God. So waiting upon the Lord begins with our decision. Don't wait for God to pull you in. You decide. There are things God will not do for you, and that's one of them. Hmm. She's not in her head. Don't even pray that. Don't even pray. Help me pray, because he won't help you. You pray. Yeah. And when you pray, he shows up. Pull yourself up by your own prayer bootstraps. That's against actually the New Testament. When you don't have words, the Holy Spirit intercedes for you. Yeah, well. But he's, he just he's went against him. He's Benny Hinn. He's wrong. You know what I realized we we failed to do here. Uh -huh. Why do we have him at normal mm. speed? Are we, I mean, this is bad enough. So we make the first move in prayer. We make the first move in waiting upon the Lord. So it says, draw nigh to God, and then he'll draw nigh to you, but not the other way around. There you go. So David understood that principle that you have to make that decision. In Psalm 130, verse 5, he said, I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait. When I heard that message the first time, I was young, back in the catacomb days in Canada. And catacomb? to my amazement, the people that taught it were the leaders of the church back then. He's talking about waiting because everyone has to wait to get healed. <laughs> they all thought about waiting upon the Lord. Whether it was uh, Cody Ten Boom or <laughs> Catherine Kuhlman or any of the greats that I would want to be active. I've shared this, that story with well, maybe he had to go, you know. But I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Flash of power hit the place. They began jumping out of their seats, coming up. She she had not said anything about, like, someone is being healed. Not, not a word. Who's this? She Captain just said, Kuhlman? not a sound. And the miracles began happening. With a lady who was blind, began to see. And I remembered sitting in that service. I, I remembered Peter, who said, you'll find God in quiet as many. So... I go to Canada. I was already in the, in the ministry for a few months when that happened in, in Ms. Kuhlman's meeting. So now I go to Canada. I, I had a big, uh, big, uh, big meetings in those days 
on Monday nights, we'd have up to 3,000 people come, and a lot of them that came to my meetings in those early, early days were people from Latvia, Romania, all these, and, all, and then a lot of Jamaicans and people from the islands. I had a choir of about 40 people. The majority were from, you know, Bahamas and Jamaica and so forth. This is so this helpful is for my life. <laughs> so I'm thinking, I'm going to try this out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do what Catherine did. Mm. I learned something. I thought, okay, here we go. Now, I never had done that in my Wake life. Wake up. In any oh. meeting. <laughs> you I got said, up too fast. Not a sound Sorry. made. I'm thinking, let's see what happens. Yeah. Keep my hands to myself. Me, people everywhere. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I, it took me 20 minutes or more to say, not a sound. And the choir was the worst. They, they, they couldn't stop the hallelujahs and the amens. And the, thank you, Jesus. Finally, it was quiet. Gail Beasley was there that night. Oh, Gail. <laughs> and I had a, a dear lady who was from Scotland who used to play the organ. Beasley. Isn't that Mrs. Beasley's because mother? Because he wants to be gracious to you. Here we go. He wants to be exalted and have mercy on you. But you have to wait. And show you his justice. But nothing will happen until you wait. Mm -hmm. When you wait on the Lord, you'll experience his grace. You'll experience his mercy. And you'll exalt him. Because waiting on God exalts him. It honors him. Someone wants me. Someone is waiting on me. And here's another amazing scripture from which we all know by heart, but I want to show you something about it. Isaiah 40, 31. Would you put that on the screen for us? <coughs> they that wait upon the Lord renew shall their renew their strength. Mount up like wings wait, of now. eagles. They shall mount up with wings as eagles because waiting upon the Lord puts you on, on, on heights you've never been to before. Wait. So what's the realistic view when you're waiting for God? <clears throat> I mean, um, I think what, what's missing here in general is the idea that Christ came to us. Mm -hmm. Christ came to earth. He came to guilty sinners. And he didn't wait for us to do any certain number of things before he said, okay, now they've shown themselves to be worthy. worthy. Mm -hmm. So... I really think this is very, very backwards. Mm -hmm. um, are there times when we should wait upon God for a certain, uh, maybe... Uh, We're always uh, waiting on God there's, there's for always, something. There's always something. There's answers to prayer. Whether then, illness, financial, family members, But I, he's not really health. talking about specific things like an answers to specific prayer requests, but he's more talking about this Presence whole, of yeah, God. Yeah, you you get this <laughs> thing that comes in now. Because you've done enough. It's it's um, You've shown yourself worthy enough. It's basically... A uh, vague sort of mysticism. Yeah, that's a good point. Waiting on the Lord literally lifts you to a place <coughs> where the winds are strong. So. That, that's meaningless. Just saying, if you really think that that's what you're going to feel when you're waiting on the Lord, you're going to be disappointed. Some of you will be. I know that typically when you are waiting for God, it's not this euphoric feeling of all of a sudden you're here. It's It's more like. God stretching your patience and your faith by believing that he will come through one way or the other. And it doesn't always feel like that. Well, and it also, it, it this is really emphasizing the idea that we can hear from God if we just right. are quiet for a long enough period of time and he'll speak to us internally. Outside of the outside Bible. Of God's word. Right. Yeah, which is a huge problem. That's when we start, you know, if you're, if you're desperate enough, you can convince yourself of anything. Anything, yes. And this is what we've been there. Yeah, I, I think most of you have. Yeah, you've, you've you've been so desperate, and you've tried, you know, doing all the techniques and things, and maybe you can convince yourself that, oh yeah, I, I think I heard God say this and that, and I, I think at best it's extremely rare for God to be really direct about real specific things, because He does speak to us primarily through His Word. Right. And that's me being real kind of general. I don't want to get into super right. detail about exactly what does it look like when God is communicating with us or does God ever communicate real directly anymore or is it just his and word? And that's something that we had to dig into and learn ourselves because we wanted to know what God speaks through his holy word. The whole It's been inspired by the Holy Spirit. So that's God's word to us. What do we do with it? And do we, <clears throat> do we also have the freedom... To say, I don't need God to give me an answer on this. I can just 
you know, mm -hmm. use my reasoning and common sense and to talk to the wise Wisdom, people in my life. Exactly. You know, and not feel like you're going to make a mistake because you didn't get the answer directly from God himself. Because that can be a real burden. Right. Been there, done that. Yeah. Like, I, I waited and I did X, Y, and Z, and now I think God said I should do this. And then it doesn't happen. It's like, well, God, you're not there. You don't love me. And right. I waited. And the truth was, you did that thing because you wanted to. Right. And you made it seem like God told you to do it when really you wanted to do it. And I think, too, there's not enough talk about, we st which Paul talks about, we still live in the flesh. You know, we, we still have our flesh to battle against. That's the better way to put it. Yeah. And that's what I meant. Um, and if we believe like some of these people are preaching that or if we're s swayed to believe that, no, we can live a sinless life or pretty, pretty darn good. Or this constantly getting better higher, and better. And, yeah, and better. Like, like he just said there, you're going to you're going to what, what was the phrase he just used? It's very typical of this. <clears throat> Wait now. They shall mount up with wings as eagles because waiting upon the Lord puts you on, on, on heights you've never been to before. Waiting on the Lord literally lifts you to a place where the wings are strong. I, I honestly believe that if you're really following Christ, you will have more difficulties. Oh, Jesus said we would. Right. So... If you look at what Jesus said, and I'm said, not, and I'm we'll, saying we'll like you should through. be a, you should martyr, a martyr, or right. you should intentionally make your life worse on purpose, but just to expect that you actually have more obstacles as a sincere follower of, of Christ, not that you're going to have everything get better and better. Let's scoot ahead a bit because Please. I'm sure he's going to start healing, healing people. people it's, here's an hour and thirty minutes. See, there's two kinds of people like that talk. Those. Mm -hmm. Oh, dear God. I'm trying to be sweet here, okay? Okay. Only people who are full of, of themselves talk. <laughs> wait, wait. I think he just uttered a, a truth. <laughs> this is absolute truth. What would you call that? This is when you tell on yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's right. When the presence, and that's all I'll say. When the presence of God comes, you become so quiet not because you're empty, but because you're full. Mm. There's two kinds of quietness. You're quiet because you have nothing to say, or you're quiet because you have so much to say you can't say it. <laughs> the presence of God gets you so full you can't talk. In His presence is fullness of joy. You can't talk. You, you only cry. So, waiting empties us of self. Waiting enables us to receive God's power and fullness in our innermost being. Because the quieting of our soul is what enables the Holy Spirit to touch our depth. If God wants to touch us through the Holy Spirit, he can do it anytime he wants. Right. And, and sometimes it's in the middle of disaster. And I um, and there's no quietness there. There's mainly screaming <laughs> <laughs> and yelling at each other. I mean, um, yeah. If, he's if, coming up with his own little oh yeah, it's all system it's all of how system. he's interpreting mm -hmm. the scripture and, and what look, God's going to do for you. Interpreting? Interpreting. You're making up words, just yeah, like yeah. him. <laughs> you feel that just lifting. Well, I sound it's better lifting. than him. It's yeah. lifting. <laughs> it's lifting. You feel it, don't you? And when we are that quiet, mm -hmm. then we're going to experience <clears throat> Psalm 42, 7 and 8. Put that on the screen, please. When, when, when the Lord begins to touch the inner depth of your being, because you've sat quietly, it says, Deep calls unto deep, at the noise of your waterfalls or sprouts, all your waves and billows have gone over me. What is that? I watched in California one time when a tornado was over the Pacific Ocean. And the water was being lifted into that tornado as we were watching. Kenneth Copeland could have made it go whoop, 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 back. Hmm? When you went upon the... I've never heard of a tornado on the Pacific coast. Me neither. I, th I think they're called water spouts. Well, and I've seen them in the Gulf, in the but Gulf. I don't know what they're called. Yeah. In, yeah. I've never Lord. heard of them. He goes into your depth. He talks to your depth. She's when God begins to feel your depth, waterfalls or, sp or sprouts begin to form that pull you into 
the thickness <laughs> of the wave. Is it like bean sprouts? I think he's finally, I think I finally know what he's, water spouts. Yeah, water sprouts. <laughs> I, finally, I didn't know what he meant. I just figured that out too. Of his presence. Water sprouts. Because it says your waves and billows. Billows, by, by the way, are springs. The Hebrew word spring. What are billows? Uh, it's like uh it's like something moving. It's terrible, like, isn't it? I, I would think See of... See Billow's Roll? Remember yeah, that, it, that it, old hymn? It's like something overcoming you. It's... I could go over to my dictionary collection. Springs. Your waves and your springs are now all over by my beak. I've been there. I know what I'm talking about. I've been there. <laughs> when you I know become what I'm so about. full, you cannot talk. Everything in you... <laughs> is communicating with such purity, but it's all heart, not mental at all. You begin to to communicate in your death with the tears falling on your pillow. I've been there. Mm. When the Lord touched me and I felt his hand rubbing my hair on my forehead in Canada back in the 70s, <coughs> I'm laying on my bed <laughs> Listening to the old reel-to-reel, -reel, old reel-to-reel -reel tapes, I would tape the most beautiful worship from the Gaithers. They just finished their album, Alleluia. And I would play it, and there were some songs I put on that tape that were sung from Sweden. Your mom would be really good with this. Hey, <clears throat> knock it off. <laughs> we do that kind of stuff off camera. Yeah, behind the scenes. Billow. Large swell of water or smoke. Wave. That's it. Go. Large billow. It's a wave. There they are. Look at look at look at this bad boy. That's a dictionary. That's a dictionary and a half. I, oh look at they got all wrinkled. Are these mine? He bought me dove chocolates for Valentine's Day and I'm still working on them. I'm not such a jerk after all. <laughs> Who said that? Put it in the comments if you agree with me or not. <laughs> the after all part. <laughs> Milk chocolate. H I L C. In Swedish. I didn't, I didn't even know the words, but the melody was so heavenly. Mm. Mm. And I would lie at night waiting. And when that reel would, would finish, I'd rewind it and start all over again. Till four and three and four in the morning. And one night, it just became so deep, the tape stopped, but I didn't need it no more. Because when Jesus walks in, the tape is not needed. Mm. He doesn't need it, we need it. But when he walks in, it's over. Yeah, yeah, I got that. The tears falling on my pillow. My heart was bursting with communication. It sounds like a country song. It's with you. I've been there. Keep that, keep that verse on. I've been in that. By the way, I got more detail on billows. Mm -hmm. A great wave or surge of the sea or any surging mass, like billows of smoke, mm -hmm. to rise or roll in or like billows to surge to swell out, puff up, etc., as by the action of wind, flags billowing in the breeze, to make rise, surge, swell, or the like. There you go. What did he say it was? Springs. Is that what he was saying was springs? It's been so long ago now, I don't remember. We want to go back. And in that moment, I felt fingers on my forehead, brushing my hair. How does this help anybody? Hearing how God stroked your forehead in the 1970s, how does this help anybody? If I was you in the room, don't believe. I'd, be, I'd be like, hey, dude, who cares? T teach something that actually matters. Because that. that's when, when he shows up, in those moments of such quietness and depth. <clears throat> okay, so if he's so knowledgeable about this, how come he hasn't had God come and stroke his forehead since the 1970s? I mean, If you have an answer, just put it in the comments <laughs> put it in below. The comments. <laughs> That's what people do to get their algorithms going. That's right. Hey, I don't know. What do you guys think? Put, Put in the, the comments. comments. Elijah experienced it mm -hmm. in that still small voice when he put... You know, I'd like to hear about the healing. That's <laughs> This is a healing service. <clears throat> because in silence... Put Zechariah, please. Yeah. Zechariah chapter 2, verse 13. In silence, something happens. I'll read it to you. Okay. But I really want the people to see it too, if possible. So Zechariah 2.13, the Lord says this, Be silent, O all flesh, before the Lord, for he is raised up out of his holy habitation. Only silence causes him to stand. 
No, not true. It's his own. It's its own little rules. Yeah. Okay, we're not getting very far. No, we're not. Hang on. Let, let Although we are an hour and forty minutes in a three-hour and twenty-minute program, so we're, we're right doing pretty now, good. Right. Was it two thirteen? At least I found it quickly. Look when she shoves her little nose in. I don't know if you can see that. Two thirteen, right? In the bed, she tufts her little nose in there. Sorry, something's got to be entertaining. There. See. She's finding <clears throat> comfort here. <laughs> I don't know. I, I should probably read the whole chapter. Because he's saying that yeah, he's, keep, keep he's, silent before the Lord all flesh because he has roused himself from his holy dwelling. I could tell you right now, this is about you should be in fear of God. Keep silent. Don't don't talk to God. Don't go there. This isn't the time for you to be talking. I mean, just reading it. Be silent, all flesh, before the Lord, for he is aroused from his holy habitation. I'm reading a modern translation. It is also very accurate. Keep silent before the Lord, all flesh, because he has roused himself from his holy dwelling. So before that, sing loudly. I'm just going to read it, verse 10. Sing loudly and rejoice, daughter of Zion. Yes, look, I am coming, and I will dwell among you, declares the Lord. Many nations will be joined to the Lord on that day. And they will become my people. I will dwell among you, and you will know that the Lord of armies has sent me to you. Then the Lord will take possession of Judah as his special portion of the holy soil, and he will again choose Jerusalem. So he's doing what he's going to do. And the next verse is keep silent before the Lord. And what after it, what, what does it say after keep silent? Well, before that it says, Attention Zion, escape, you who dwell with the daughter of Babylon. For this is what the Lord of armies says. For the sake of his glory, he sent me to the nations that plundered you, because whoever touches you touches the apple of his eye. Yes, I myself will swing my hand over them, and they will become plunder for their own slaves. Then you will know that the Lord of armies has sent me. So this isn't talking about just be silent and then God will take you to this wonderful place. Well, he's talking and, about... Yeah, and he's also saying that <clears throat> unless you're quiet, God can't do anything. Right. Let's listen to that again. I mean, we're going on a rabbit trail. Uh, mm, that's how I feel. Not as bad but as what him. What tells us in Zechariah 2, 2, 13, something probable. It says, be silent. Why? Because in silence, put Zechariah, please. Yeah. Zechariah chapter 2, verse 13. In silence, something happens. I'll read it to you. But I really want the people to see it too, if possible. So Zechariah 2, 13. The Lord says this, Be silent, O all flesh, before the Lord, for he is raised up out of his holy habitation. Only silence causes him to stay. <laughs> you know, so, we have control over God. This verse didn't say that right. because they were silent, then God rose up. Right. Okay. Let's Just keep going. Pointing it out. I'm sure he's going to start healing any second now. Over and over and over. Oh, and, and I sometimes just play this instrumental. And I wait. And believe me, within half an hour, sometimes less, Jesus walks in. Isn't Jesus and always it's with just us? Beautiful words that come out of my lips that I never even planned to say. It happened to me this morning. This morning it happened to me. Or well, suddenly I'm talking That's and my not tongue in, along with her. My spirit language becomes precise. Mm. Not repetitious. Yeah. You've been there, guys. I know some of you have been there. <laughs> yes. Now it's the real words come out. Why? Because your spirit man has awakened in quietness. All right, <clears throat> you're listening. I'm really glad you are because you all need the part of God and I'm showing you how to get it because I've been there. Because I've been there before crusades, okay? Now, I want to I wanna say something. Okay. That I think is <laughs> He's not been saying anything all I night. I wasn't, uh, wasn't planning on saying it, but I think I will. Okay. Okay. Um, you remember when the Lord said, the Father seeks those who worship in spirit? And truth. All right. What really was he saying? Man's <clears throat> highest glory, man's highest glory is to worship. Because God created us for fellowship. And worship 
is the greatest expression of that fellowship. When we worship, it's an expression of our fellowship with Him. And, and, all the, if I can call them all the exercises of the Christian life, uh, like, like uh, prayer would be an exercise of Christianity, uh, love, so when you pray, you're talking to God, or when you're loving the Lord, or when, when, when your faith is alive in the Lord, mm -hmm. or, or when you surrender, okay. or when you're obedient to Him, all that culminates in one thing, worship. Because when you worship, you're praying. You're loving. You're faithful, full of faith. Worship means you're surrendering. You're obedient. Because everything culminates in worship. Worship is the completion of prayer. The completion of love. The completion of faith. The completion of surrender. The completion of obedience is worship. So he's got three hours and 20 minutes for a healing service. And he's talking all about how important worship is. But they're not actually doing any worship for the three hours and 20 minutes. Well, except for that little few minutes we saw of them. And we singing. heard him talk. We heard him talk a lot. Let's skip ahead just a little bit more. An hour and 53 minutes. Flesh in your spirit, man. So the soul, the seat of your personality, that easily submits to the body now, can easily submit to the spirit if you wait. Okay. And when I did, mm -hmm. I was in. Yeah. And I would tell John Wilson, I don't want to see anything on the way to the crusade. Mm. I want all the, the, the pictures when I walk in covered. Because sometimes in those stadiums they would put pictures of the world. It's not, I don't even look at them. Yeah. Because I was so in the spirit, I could not allow the, the world back. I got on that platform. Back in the day. The thousands. <laughs> but... But after the thing ends, he goes to the most expensive hotel. Thirty thousand dollars a night. Yeah, fell there. Maybe it was twenty. Why? Silence did it. Why don't you start doing it? Mm. What are you waiting for? Mm. So God can use you now. Yeah. This world needs you, kids. You young people. I'm almost on, on my way home soon. Ten more years, fifteen more more years. I'll be saying shalom to you. But you you will still be around. And this world is getting more demonic. <laughs> Evil. The power of God will be needed more. Is he still married? Mm hmm Yeah. Oh. Just notice he hasn't been wearing his wedding ring. Oh. Just It could have just been a mistake. And it's at the cleaners. It's at the cleaners. Or in the future, in the past. It's up to you to pay the price. What is the, the price? Stillness mm -hmm. in the presence of the Lord. Stillness. Waiting on the Lord. How many times must you read Isaiah 40? How many times must you hear Isaiah 30? And the Psalms, wait, wait, I say wait. And he repeats it over and over. So you listen to it. Do more, try harder. The minute you wait, you weaken and dismantle the power of the flesh. And now begin to play real gentle here, like heavenly gentle. Because miracles are going to happen within the next few minutes here. Uh -huh. When you... Okay. He's making a promise. Now we're getting somewhere. Next few minutes. Miracles are going to happen. Are on their way. In the next few minutes. Okay. So. And where are we at now? One hour and 56 minutes and 44 seconds. Few minutes means three. <clears throat> I'm going so go to go to. let's just see. Because few minutes does mean three. Is that. Few. It, yes. That's what it means. You used to work at the state capitol. So you must know these things from a legal standpoint. Do. Yeah. So three minutes later, what are we doing? That's what the world wants. It should be 59. There's a lot of smart people out there who can uh, keep you glued for hours. You listen to them and you're amazed by their intelligence, but their wisdom is worldly. You don't even understand half of what they say. Cookies. They're for you. But there is a heavenly wisdom that is given through the knowledge of Jesus. Because it talks about spiritual understanding. That's wisdom. <coughs> there is also, there's also where people, for example, uh, mentally are very smart. Mm -hmm. That's called the mind of the flesh. Mm. Let's let's go to Colossians. In, actually, in Colossians 2.18, it talks about the mind of the flesh. So there is the mind of the flesh. But do you know that there is also a mind of the spirit? Because it says here, people are puffed up by their fleshly mind. See that? Fleshly mind. So it's possible to have a mind that looks spiritual, but it's not really spiritual at all. It's all flesh. Now, the real 
spiritual mind is mentioned in Colossians 1 verse 9 because that's the kind that really, really matters to us believers. <clears throat> for this cause we also cease the day, since the day we heard, do not cease to pray for you to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual. Understand that spiritual mentality. Again, back to that verse we had read earlier, it all comes through the knowledge of God and his will. But how about worship? Is it possible to worship in the flesh? Absolutely. That's what you see today mostly. So you can worship in the flesh, and that's what we see today mostly. I wonder what he's referring to. I really don't know. Did you also forget that I have him at 1.25 speed? Yeah. It oh. seems normal. It seems normal. Uh huh. That's something. But it's been more than a few minutes, and there is no miracles happening yet. It's, it should be at 59. And Colossians 2 tells us that worship in the flesh satisfies the flesh, not God. It makes people feel good. That's not real worship then, is it? Mm. So Colossians 2, look at Colossians 2 for a second, and look at verse 18. No, I'm sorry, Colossians 2, 18 and 23. This is a, this is a uh, fleshly worship, which thinks have indeed a show of wisdom, Colossians 2, 23, in will worship. Will worship means it's born by the will. This is actually um, a section that's got the subheading of Paul addresses the false teaching. Okay. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you in regard to food or drink or in regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of the things that were coming, but the body belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone who enjoys false humility and the worship of angels tell you that you are disqualified from the prize. <clears throat> Excuse me. This person goes into detail about what he has seen. <laughs> he is puffed up for no reason by the attitude of his sinful flesh. He does not hold on to the head from whom the whole body grows with the growth that comes from God as it is supported and held together by its sinews and ligaments. If you die with Christ to the basic principles of the world, why do you submit to its rules as if you were still living in the world? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle. All of these rules end in destruction when they are used because they are in accord with human commands and teachings. While such rules have the appearance of wisdom with self-chosen religion, which consists of humiliation and the severe treatment of the body, they have no value at all in checking the self-indulgence of the sinful flesh. So this is a passage about people who were basically kind of torturing themselves, thinking that they were doing this great spiritual thing. Uh, um, it didn't start that way. What's that? It didn't start that way. No, but that's you what talked that, about people talking about themselves being puffed up in the flesh, which yeah. I had chuckled. Yeah, that was inappropriate. I know. I decide to worship. Let's worship, but it's not led by the spirit. It's will worship. Will worship, and it 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 seems to be humility and neglecting of the body, nothing in honor, but at the end. All it's doing is, it satisfies the flesh. It's right there. But what did Jesus say in John 4.24? He said, the Father seeks those who worship. So he's actually oh. taking that verse to mean that it's about people who are having a, 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 a fleshly worship. Right. And it's all about <clears throat> flesh and it's not real worship. But this is actually talking about people who are trying to obey certain antiquated, outdated laws and rules in order to satisfy God. While such rules have the appearance of wisdom with self-chosen religion, which consists of humiliation and severe treatment of the body, they have no value at all in checking the self-indulgence of the sinful flesh. This, this verse doesn't say, you know, when you worship, make sure you're worshiping sincerely and not from a fleshly desire. It's not really about worship. It's about this whole idea of um, human traditions do not restrain the flesh, about how human traditions don't keep us from being sinful. It's a spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not like he's saying something that's totally wrong. I think it's true that you could be worshiping when really what you're doing is putting on a show. I think that's kind of what he's trying to say, but he's, he's using this verse to make the case which is not about when that. 
Paul wasn't making that case. No. Yeah. Right. Spirit. Now, what does it mean to worship in the spirit? Psalm 22, 22 answers me. It's not me worshiping. It's the Lord worshiping through us. <clears throat> that is what God is looking for. Well, then why doesn't he just do it? He's telling it. He's well. He's no. He's saying how you have to do all these things and really, really worship the right way. You gotta, you gotta be quiet long enough. You gotta do all this stuff. So and not talk can, about yourself. Yeah. And then he says, but it's not, it's not you worshiping. It's God worshiping through you. So it's like, well, then we shouldn't be told all the things we're supposed to do if God's the one that's ultimately doing it. Listen to that again. It seems to be humility and neglecting of the body. Not in any honor, but at the end, all it's doing is, it satisfies the flesh. It's right there. But what did Jesus say? I don't know. In John 4.24, he said, the Father seeks those who worship in spirit. Now, what does it mean to worship in the spirit? Psalm 22.22 answers me. It's not me worshiping. He missed the other part of what Jesus said. <clears throat> God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. He left out truth. Yeah, well, he's doing a bunch of verses here. Yeah, he? yeah. he's juggling all kinds of things. It's the Lord worshiping through us. So the Lord is worshiping through us. It's not us. Kind of, it's kind of like, well, then why are you telling us all the stuff we're supposed to do when right. it's actually going to be God doing it anyway? That is what God is looking for. But he's looking Look at Psalm 22, 22. <laughs> I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Kirsten, David, all of you guys. Praise is, is mental. Praise, that's how we begin. Is mental. We begin with praise. Mental. Oh. But there is a place where we surrender. Mm. But we cannot surrender unless we had waited that day upon the Lord. I need a Otherwise flow chart. Will, will, will <laughs> the flow chart of the will, of will, mental. It's you, but it's not you. God, is a place worship. You got to take yourself out of it, but you got to really think about how you're taking yourself out of it. Humility, which I not humility. Today, by the way, then you easily can move into the spiritual <laughs> you and can... surrender to the Lord, and He is the one who worships through you. I think that would be not a really good idea. There's no He's... such thing as people worshiping. No, they no. seem to be become vehicles of worship. Okay. Instruments of worship. Yeah. Remember that old song, Make Me an Instrument, an Instrument of Worship? That's what it means. Oh, that well, that's that. It's that's not a Bible verse, but it is. That's an old song. In Hebrews 2 11 and 12, we see the same beautiful truth about the Lord is the one who worships, not us. For both. He said Hebrews 11. He that oh. sanctified and they who are sanctified are one. 2 11. Hold on there, folks. Hang on there. About the Lord is the one who worships, not us. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are Hebrew sanctified are 11. one. For which cause he's not ashamed to call them brethren. So this oneness happens. And Two, now and saying, I will declare your name unto my brethren. <clears throat> In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. It begins with oneness with the Lord. A merciful and faithful high priest is the subtitle for this section. Okay. I'm going to start at verse 10 of Hebrews 2. Certainly it was fitting for God, the one for whom and through whom everything exists, in leading many sons to glory, to bring the author of their salvation to his goal through sufferings. For he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified all have one Father. For that reason he is not ashamed to call them brothers. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers within the congregation. I will sing your praise. And again, I will trust in him. And again, here I am, and the children of God has given me. Uh, which are quotes from the Psalms. Uh, Psalm and Isaiah. You know what I like, actually? Hmm. When he stops talking? The, that too. But the longer we've been away from this kind of teaching, then we get back into it, it doesn't make sense to me. And then I got to try to figure out how it would make sense because thank God he's like been unbrainwashing me and cleansing my brain with the truth of scripture opposed to it being filtered through somebody like him. Uh, seriously, because I can't follow him. Oh, 
Yeah. I'm, I don't know I where you. he's at, and he's just so proud of himself. He's making points, and I'm like, you're not making any points with me. I don't, if anything, you're making a point that you really don't know what you're talking he's about. He's filling time. Yeah. I'm going to see if there's some notes on this. <clears throat> hmm. Two hours and four minutes still has not healed anybody. Just thought uh, I'd point that out. 211 sanctifies, he holy, because the Father adopts us through Jesus. Jesus and Christians have God as their Father. Also, Jesus, as a true human being, shares descent with us from the one human father, Adam. Not ashamed to call them brothers. Jesus is ready to confess before the Father and all creation that believers in him are truly his family. Now, uh, verse 12 and 13, it just says here, in, I'm using the Lutheran Study Bible, which has got really, really good notes. Uh, Old Testament quotes emphasize Jesus' solidarity with mankind. So I don't know where he's getting the idea that this verse says how God praises himself through our praises. I yeah, don't know. That's weird. That's what I've been talking about the whole time here. And now will you surrender to him? Of course you must. What happens if you don't surrender? The Lord. Or don't I surrender completely. Word. How do you know when you have? No, you don't. Your word. Hmm. Please, Lord, bring them to that place. I give you praise. Jesus. Oh, yeah. Okay. Healing's going to happen any second. Singing on. Oh, boy. We've got to get some more music in. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All of you join me. Sing that to him. Awaken in moments like these. Like this is the one I got the lifting I from. Sing out a song. <laughs> Surprise for you guys. The howling Good is back. Girl. Give him some spicy, spicy treats. Good boy. He's really picky. Good girl. <laughs> oh boy. Good job, guys. Good job. Do we have something for him? Two hours and 20 minutes. No miracles. And counting. Yeah wrong with your leg. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I can have an airhead. Do you have a, a, a big pad of paper so you can check <laughs> off all the miracles? <coughs> Sorry, I'm getting over a sinus infection that's been around forever. Mr. Bean. He's <laughs> also there in your home. Someone has been healed in this building something wrong with your leg. I believe it's your left leg just been healed about a few minutes ago. You felt the power of God go through that leg. Well, there's a miracle right there. I mean, he just said it, so you know it's got to be true. Hallelujah. Lord, heal your people. Hmm. I rebuke sickness. Okay, there you go. I rebuke disease and infirmity. Heal your one... So if you rebuke sickness, but you don't rebuke infirmities what you lost you, well you're like what half there because, you're not there all the way because infirmity is just another word for sickness mm -hmm. what about disease did he say disease i think he said disease you got to use all the words otherwise it doesn't doesn't work it's also there in your home someone has been healed in this building of the leg Something wrong with i think it's the leg. left a left leg it's your left leg yep. been healed yep. about a few minutes ago just about a few minutes ago part of God with that leg. you know what happened it lifting Lord, heal your people. Mm, okay. I rebuke sickness. Sickness. I rebuke disease. Disease. And infirmities. And infirmities. Okay, we're good. Heal your wonderful inheritance. Okay. Okay. 
That's good. Okay. That's a good start. Lift two voices and pray the Holy Ghost. Come on, quick. Okay. Okay. A stomach infection has been healed here. Oh, there's a second one. A stomach infection has been healed. How do we know that? Because he said it. <laughs> there you go. A neck injury has been healed oh, here. Neck injury has been healed. A skin condition has been healed here. Skin condition has been healed. High blood pressure has just been healed here. Wow. It's really someone a problem with your knee, your this... right knee. The Lord just Left, healed you. I give right. you praise. He's Lord. got it covered. Look at her. A number of you people in this very building are sensing uh -huh. the power of God on your body. The power of God on no, your body. Not me. I give you praise. Our Christ <laughs> has just been healed also in somebody's arm and hand. If the is Lord is here? healing you here we in go. the auditorium, here, yeah. in this building, yeah. if you sense the power on your body, and you know that it has touched you. Yeah. Get out of your seats now. Okay. Come stand here on the front quickly, 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 quickly. 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 Yeah, because you've only had three hours. Why has it got to be quickly? Aww. This is a Catherine Kuhlman thing. Everything was quick, quick, quick. You get people to do whatever you want when you say quickly because they feel quick. this pressure. Healing you or has <clears throat> healed you tonight, and you. If he has healed you or, or is, is healing, healing you, you, come up here. What happened to this thing? It's okay. It's just scooting I around. See. Sense this power on your body. Yeah. Get over here to the left very, very quickly. Very, Everyone, very quickly. Lift your voices and pray. Hurry, lift hurry, your hurry. voices and pray. <laughs> lift your voices now, and now, thank now. You for this. Hey, it's like that guy. Now, 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 now. There are 100 people right now that are right now. You're to pick up the phone and sow a $1,000 seed. Nine. Everyone pray. Lift your voices and pray. Lift your voices and pray. Now. And Lori, bring them one by one, one by one, one by one. Two by two. $1,000. And when he talks to you, I'm going to have you come down here and sow $1,000 in the Lord's work. And so a $1,000 seed. Now I'm telling you something. God already has placed that $1,000 in your hand. You have it someplace. I know you have other plans for it, but God has just changed your plans. $1,000. Call it now. $1,000. Move along. Move along. Jesus, Jesus, check the healings quickly. Quickly. Chad, you can check the healings too. You can check the healings. Oh, wait, did you no, have No it? need for a microphone. You know just check the healings and bring them on one by Hi, one. Can Please, I pick people her up? of God, lift your hands and pray. Josh Vody is helping in the line. Help, help me in the, in, help. In the line. Help. This is help. just help. crazy. Up one All by the one. healing is happening. All over the place. Oh, it's just Please crazy. One, two, three. And uh, wow. Lucas, come up here and help us. Lucas, here we go. get up here on the platform. Here we go. Come on, Lucas. Get up here on the platform. Get up there. What happened to this man? What happened? Listen. S say what now? Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, I thank you for that anointing. See, they didn't say what it was. Joshi, stay up here. He didn't pray for he that one. That guy up here. He seems really sick right Chad, now. He's laying down. down and help Marie. <laughs> Poor fella. Lucas and Joshua can help me up here. And Marie, what happened to this guy here? Left arm. Marie, what right happened leg. to him? His stomach, what was wrong with his stomach? Stomach, so? infection. Pardon? Parasitic infection. Well, I, infection. Parasitic infection. infection. Yeah, he prayed about that. People of God, the anointing is strong here right now. Oh, Lift yes. your hands and pray in the spirit. Okay. Because it won't work otherwise. Yabba -dabba -dabba what happened to that girl, Chad? Where's your rabbit's foot? Let me know. <laughs> she had a tumor on the right side of her body. She feels it completely gone. No more. Bring her up here. Bring her up here. Help those guys up, please. Help Where's that x-ray? I, I don't know, but I like it when the tumor just falls <laughs> off. I like that story. They don't use that one when they got Not a camera anymore. going. No. Please. Come here, my dear. Lord, every bit of it goes. Every bit of it goes. Get ready, every catchers. Bit of it goes. Oh, Jesus, wonderful name. Timber! There we go. There's an anointing on that man down there. Bring him up here. That one, that one. Bring, bring, bring. There Bonded. she is. So She's being passed over again. Out. He feels the anointing all over. Every bit of it goes. And she's ho, ho. Whoa, he's... Bring him up here. That looked convincing. Moving. Something, you, something's Jesus. going on. He's One moving. more time, holy, what do you think? holy, holy, you think holy you're Lord, you come stand here with me. From your coffee? The singers come. You think? What happened there, Chad? Holy. Pastor says yesterday he hasn't been able to eat. He's had terrible stomach pain tonight. The Lord healed him. Come, come here. Maybe he took a Rolaids and he, that's why the stomach pain went away. I think I should put it on regular speed now that there's... Okay. We're going back to normal speed, people, so readjust your so watches patient. at home. Come, come. Bring him closer. 
Lord. I thank you for the anointing on him. Thanks. Whoa. You oh, oh, oh. Home. He didn't he go down completely. Down. Just, can we pray for those in their homes right now? Can you lift your hands and pray for what them? What about the people you just asked Lord, to come up front? Heal right. every one of them in their homes. Heal everyone in their homes. In Jesus' mighty name. Yeah, what? Take your seats here. Take, take, take your seats. Where do you take them? That camera. Put that camera on me so I can pray for them. <coughs> okay, so right now it's 229 and 48 seconds. And how many people did he touch? Maybe three? I don't remember. Was it four? So l let's go back. That's, that like was 228. Messes. Yeah. This is 226. 227. Chad, you go down and help Marie. Lucas and Joshua can help me up here. And is this Marie, the first guy? what happened to this no. guy here? No. Marie, what happened to him? His stomach, what was wrong with your stomach, sir? Parasitic infection. Parasitic Lord, infection. Lord, I rebuke it in Jesus' name. Now, just, Lucas, come up here and help us. Lucas, no, that's that's the first guy. Luke, get up here right? on the platform. What happened to this man? Say what now? Dear Jesus, dear Jesus. Whatever. No, there's one more over. before Joshi, there's me, There was it before that? Right. Lift your voices and thank him for this. Sorry, folks. We're going to... We have line, to be exact. Line. Everyone pray. Lift your voices and pray. Lift your voices and pray. We're going fast. And Marie, yeah, but I'll do. By one, one by one, one by one. Lord, I give you the praise. I give you the praise. I give you the praise. So, Jesus... He's giving marching instructions. Jesus, Jesus, check the healings quickly. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Chad, you can check the healings too. You can check the healings. No, no need for a microphone. Just check the healings and bring them on one by one. These people of God, lift your hands and pray. Josh Voorhees, help me in the line. Help me in the, in the line. It's a lot easier to watch it this one. way. Bring this man up here. Bring him up here. Bring him up. Yeah. What happened? I was going too fast. And, uh, See, that is Lucas, the first guy. Okay. Lucas, get up here on the platform. Come on, Lucas. Come on, Chad. What happened to this man? Doesn't matter. Knock him over. Just knock him over. Keep going. Keep going. Knock him over. Next. Next. Bring that guy up here. Bring that guy up. Chad, you Come on. Down and help Marie. Chad, Lucas, down, Joshua, you up. up here. And Marie, okay. What happened to this guy here? Parasitic infection. Marie, Parasitic infection. His stomach, what was wrong with his That's the second guy. Pardon? Parasitic infection. Lord, I now we're going to get the lady who the, the tumors are falling off. Yes. Yes. The anointing is strong. Right she felt Lift your hands and pray in the spirit. Yabba dabba doo. Yabba dabba doo. What happened to that girl, Chad? Let me know. Oh, baby. She had a tumor on the right side of her body. She feels it completely gone. No more. It's completely gone. Completely gone. Completely gone. Help those guys up, please. Help those people up quickly. Come quickly, here, quickly. Lord, every bit of it go. Knock her down. Every bit of it go. Knock there her down. There we go. There we go. That's number three. He knocked down three people. There's an anointing on that man down there. Bring him up here. Bring him up. Pardon. Here we go. So oh, yeah. He's going to start he's doing that. Every bit of it goes. The oh, line. hey. Oh. Bring him up here. That's number four. Thank we got four Jesus. knockdowns. One more time. Holy, holy, holy. Oh, your Lord. You come stand here with me. The, the singer's You're come. hot, aren't you? She's hot. Oh, 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 holy, oh, holy, 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 holy. Since yesterday, he hasn't been able to eat. He's had terrible stomach pain tonight. The Lord healed him. Oh, she's really come hot. Here. I'm taking her out. Okay. You're really hot. Come well, here. She can just go walk on the floor. I know. Okay. Don't tell me what to do. Lord, Don't be like him. Oh, wait, this is the uh, fifth one. Is it the guy who was just up does, there? Yeah, that doesn't yeah. go down. Yeah. <clears throat> just, can we pray for those in their homes right now? Can you lift your hands and pray for them? Lord, heal every one of them in their homes. Every one of them. Heal okay. everyone in... So we had four people yes. with one guy being up twice. And now he's going to... He stops everything to pray for the people at home. <coughs> here. Oh, this is so take annoying. Your seats here. Do we have tissue? Take, take, take your seats. Yeah. That camera, put that camera on me so I can pray for them. Bring it closer here. Can you stretch your hands towards that camera right there? Stretch your hand towards it. Heal your people. That the same anointing that is here <laughs> go into the homes now. Okay, this is not going to stay slow. No, we can't do living that. Rooms. Living rooms. I'll fall asleep. In the homes. Homes. Are you good now? Are you good? And I rebuke sickness now. Oh, he rebuked it. And disease. I, I thought he already did that. All but over the world. He has to do all it over again. the world. Heal your people. For your name's sake, wonderful mm. Lord. Nice. Very nice. Josh, what happened to her? Her stomach was in pain. Or it was her chest. I apologize. It was her chest. Tightness in her chest. All gone. <clears throat> Get out of my way. Cirrhosis of the liver. She feels the power of God in her liver. Cirrhosis of the liver. Basically, the liver's killing her. 
Can't live without a liver. Yeah. Oh, she's not very stable there. Circulation problems in her leg. Her foot was all swollen and painful. Help the people up. Thank God, thank God, darling. Thank God for your healing. Help the ladies up. Josh, please tell me. Can you come here? They go down, down, they go up. They go down, they go up. Yeah, the logistics of this. Down, up. Down, and up. there's never enough room. He's always <coughs> telling people where to go. I have a whole video that I haven't finished yet, but it's of him at the uh, Catch the Fire Church, the All Toronto right. Church of John and Carol Arnott. And he does the same thing. He does this extremely long, drawn-out storytelling thing, and he's supposed to be healing people. He t- they, the people were told it's a healing service, and at the very end, he says, I don't have enough time. i got to get out of here. I can't heal everybody. And I'm oh. like... <laughs> And here she is. Yeah. This lady had pain in her shoulder. Tightness in her chest is all gone. All gone. All gone. All gone. Hold up, Josh. That's, all gone. that's verifiable right there. What did you feel go through you, my dear? <clears throat> electricity up in her bed. go on her bed. Oh, got the electricity. Oops. Oh, She's going on her bed. In Jesus' name. Everybody we're losing count, honey. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we're at six or seven. I want to make sure she doesn't fall off. Lord, if better that liver problem goes... In Jesus' name. I think Come that's, on, let's just say that's seven. What happened to the other <coughs> I think. I'm sorry. It's been in the shoulder. It's more healing than I expected to happen here tonight. Oh, yeah. It's just off the chart. Is that the woman who was always agreeing with him? No, that's no. the one with the... With the cirrhosis. Swollen, no, that's the one with the swollen feet, I think. A cirrhosis? Mm-hmm. Okay. So the healing part of this three-hour and 20-minute service has only been going on... Where do we start? Wasn't it 228? Yeah. Yeah. This is four minutes. It seems like it's forever. That's because we kept backing up. Expect yeah. so many. Oh, I didn't expect so many. So if he truly does have the gift of healing, don't you think he'd want to start Obviously. with healing and end with healing? Obviously. Opposed to, I didn't think there'd be so many after the eighth person. <laughs> There's a lot of people getting healed in their homes. A lot of people getting healed in their homes. Oh, sure there. You, you don't have to be in, the, in, in this building. To no, heal. no. Help him up, please. The healing service <coughs> is actually, it's almost over. What happened to Josh? Stiffness in her fingers, all the pain is gone. Stiffness in her fingers. Come on, come on, come on. Lord, thank you for your wonderful power. Thank you for your wonderful power. You know what? I want a miraculous new bag of cheeses. What happened to Chad? Chad, you can tell Those me. Those are good. I forgot how good they, they are. This lady was diagnosed with cancer in January and she feels completely healed. She feels it. Lord, she feels completely healed. The to go. We order it to go. So sad. That's now. very sad. Now. I know we're making fun of him and this whole thing, but the absolute hor- horrible tragedy is that there are people who discontinue their medical treatments after seeing this guy. And they give him the money instead of their doctor. And they die. And they die. And And he doesn't care. And we've talked with people whose family members have gone through that and the suffering and the pain. And So for those of you who think we're being too mean to him, (sighs) no, we're not being too mean to him. This is not a good man. No, he's not. Not a good man at all. In Jesus' name. Josh, what happened? Sciatica. In her hip and leg, all the pain is gone. Lord, thank you for your healing worship. Thanks for healing power. Knock her down. About the guy with the beard? About it. Stiffness in his leg or in his uh, shoulder, his back, all the pain is gone. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask the Head, rest shoulders, to go back knees, to and toes, knees and toes, knees and toes. Because <coughs> God wants to do something in the next few minutes here. Mm. A lot of you have been healed, and to Him be the praise. Help her back to her seat. Help her back to her seat. Get her off the stage. Yeah. Oh, glorious. Yeah. Uh, what happened to him? His, his knee was injured really bad during Hurricane Ian. He fell. Tonight, God healed him completely. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, that kind of looked like he was getting collapsed. <laughs> okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to pretend. I want you all to pretend with us that there was an imaginary swarm of bees that overtook him. And just see if it makes sense to you. Oh, oh thank you for <laughs> see, see the bees? Um, that wasn't very funny. Your seats. I'm going to probably come to your seats mm-hmm. in a little bit. Okay. 
So I want you all in your seat. I went a little bleep and waiting. But he just, he just preached five. on how long you need to wait. So it's been six minutes now. <laughs> six minutes of the healing You need to wait because then place. you know, then God knows that you're actually serious. That's when God can show up. Do you have scissors? Yeah. Let them go to their seats. He's already telling them to go sit back down. And there's might have been, what, a dozen of the people that were he a prayed for? At the most. I don't think it was even a dozen. Jesus be the praise. I'd really like to know how many people were actually okay. there. There we go. Yeah, lift your hands and pray in the spirit. yabba dabba do. You don't say that. And Josh is still here in church. Okay. Young man. Come here. Who's with you? Is anybody with you? <clears throat> holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Just a little. Where are you from? Brazil. Why are you here? Pardon? Impartation. Are you in the ministry? You're a pastor. You will go back. <laughs> with an additional mantle, the Lord tells me. And the mantle that's coming on you is going to be very powerful. Mm. But it will require prayer and fasting for two weeks. Here we go. Two weeks. Prayer and fasting. Is that just uh, all water? The future for you, a beautiful one, a blessed one. What about soup? What about broth? Having He's going to get to that. Manifestations of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. But you're going to for two weeks. Why doesn't he You're tell him fast. the winning number for the lottery? For That'd be weeks. really helpful. And the Lord tells me to tell you Good fund his ministry. You choose uh -huh. the fast you want because okay. it depends on your hunger. Hmm. And I would suggest to you begin slow. <clears throat> Physical hunger or spiritual hunger? Maybe liquids. <laughs> Tonight we're going to be talking about fasting. While well, we eat. In the beginning, but then slow it down and then come out of the fast <clears throat> with liquids. Lord, I thank you for what you're going to do with him. Mm -hmm. The Lord tells me he's going to take the scales off. Only you know what that means. I give you praise. Oh, yeah. That was a nice... He didn't remain stiff all the way down. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the proper way <laughs> to be slain in the Spirit? Because it seems to me that you should be stiff and go down completely as a plank, as it were. Now, this, to me... <laughs> Is not a full um, being slain in the spirit. You see the difference? Feet here, head here, body is completely stiff like a plank, a spiritual plank. But when you bend on the way down, it doesn't show that you really believe in what's you taking place. You need to place. take the plank out of your own eye. Yes. <laughs> John, that you want. Have you had children? You will. Here we go. Okay. The Lord's going to bless your wife and you with a child. What do you want God to give you? Boy or girl? No, you need to decide. You tell him. You want to go? Yep. Cross the Santa Claus. What do you want? Oh, he didn't plank. Oh, I that He started to plank. Here we go. Ooh. She didn't plank. See the girl like it's up with curly hair. I don't think we saw anyone planking tonight. Who said he saw their little girl with curly hair? For instance, there's our janitor. Yeah. When animal crackers in my zoo. That's nice. Good for him. Oh my goodness. Lord, what a God we serve. Here we go. He's going to do his thing. Oh yeah. Don't get in my way. <laughs> <laughs> there's a minister call on you. Don't get in my way. Back it up more. Don't get in my way. Don't get in my way. Back it up before that one. So with curly hair. Well, Lord, what a God we serve. Don't get in my way. There's a minister call. Don't get in my way. There's a call for minister on you. Who are you? He doesn't speak English. Uh, he's Spanish. Come help me. My son Josh, you stay up here. What have I done? Come, come. 
We're having technical difficulties. Tell him there's a... Uh, come, come, come back here. Come back here, my dear. Only one girl. No, no, it's not whatever the Lord wants. He's telling you. This is really not good teaching. Why? <laughs> because we don't tell God <clears throat> what we want, and He's like, "Hey, I'll get you. I'll get you whatever you want if you well, just she, tell me." And she me. said, "Whatever she, the Lord wants." He's like, "No." Whatever the Lord wills. He He said, "Don't say that." It's right. what What do you want? So that's not that goes against Scripture, actually. This is like the Jesse Duplantis video I put up uh, a couple of weeks ago. You know, just don't tell God what you need. Tell right. Him what you want. Now, how many of you need some money? Don't lie. Lift your hand up. Put your hand up. You know why? Because you don't know what you want. I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. You know what you need. Oh, you know what you need. But you don't know what you want. No, tell me what you want, what you really, really want. Because the church world said if you told God what you want, that's being greedy. That's greedy. No, that's growth. He shall supply how many need? How many need? How many need? He said he supply how many need? How many need? What are, you, what are you wasting spiritual energy on need? Don't tell him what you need. Tell him what you want. I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. That's why you're not prospering. Right. What do you want? You only want one girl? I want you to shut up. John, what do you want? You want three? I want 10,000 children. 10,000 children who are warriors. Two girls and one boy. Fine. And I will take over my county. Thank you, Lord. They're on the way. There's ministry in your future. Where do you come from? How come he doesn't know all this already? He's a prophetic man. What do you mean? He's, he's, <laughs> well, he's, he just... He's God's, asking this guy all these questions. Why should he do that? He should already know all about him. Oh, oh yeah. Well, that's cold reading. Or a warm reading. When you but, get but, information, and then you say, with that information, you... you you kind of so that fishing. just proves that he doesn't know what he's doing. Well, obviously. <laughs> like I had to make that point. <laughs> but we have a reason. Cuba, Cuba. okay. Uh, do you Can have, you give uh, me any cigars? Once you've had real Cubans, there's just nothing else like it. <laughs> Preachers in your family. Well, you'll be probably the first one. So he's, he's fishing. Do you have mm -hmm. preachers in your family? Mm -hmm. He goes, no. Oh, well, then you'll be the first one. Mm -hmm. But somebody prayed for you. Do mm. you know the Lord? How long have you been saved? Oh, it's good. been some time already. Good. <clears throat> if you're really saved, you won't go to this man's meetings anymore. And he did not plank. He been... Jesus. we got to come up with a term. This is me going down a useless bunny trail that isn't even funny to begin with. But the more you drive it into the ground, it becomes funny. That's my theory, and I'm sticking with it. So you can either plank. You're really wanting me to come down this bunny trail. <laughs> you can either you, plank. Aren't you? Or you can, uh, come on, think of a, what is it What is it when you bend and you're, you're succumbing to your natural tendency to not want to hurt yourself? You're, <clears throat> you're not surrendering to you're the spirit. You're protecting your body. Well, yeah. But what's a what's a funny way we can describe it? I don't it? know. You should well, have told me this before. Put that in the comments. <laughs> How glorious! Uh -huh. <coughs> Lord, clothe him. Clothe him. By the way, the healing is over. You saw it. That was it. The mantle is never known existed. This is our tissue. Oh. <laughs> he didn't blink. Oh, he brought him back up. He brought him back up, folks. We have a double. Watch, watch. Nope, and Blake. Now all of you lift your hands and pray in the spirit. Yabba dabba do. It's not what he says. <coughs> hey, I I do it my you know, way. I haven't done this for a while, but the Lord just said you do it now. Mm. I'm just obeying it. Yeah, well, I you got to do what the, the Lord tells the you. Lady in the class, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You're in Beijing. Yeah, I thought so. What do you want God to do for you, and how do you want Him to use you? Because there's something new coming on you, you know that, right? Oh, who, who, oh, I've heard that so many times, something new. <laughs> the Lord tells me he's going to open oh. your spiritual ability to smell heaven. Oh, she can smell heaven. It's like, it's like oh, she new went down before you even finished. Of heavenly divine atmospheres. 
<laughs> that could be really useful in your life. Being able to, Heavenly divine being atmospheres. Being able to smell heaven is something that I've, uh, I've always, a lot of times throughout my day. I practice doing that. <laughs> I practice. Daffodils. But there's something heavy on the Roses. Chip cookies. <laughs> That's pretty, pretty close. Well, there's our girlfriend. Smell, smell Breathe it. upon me, breath. Ooh, that oh, smells good. God. God. What do you want God to do for you, dear? Spanish. Oh, we <laughs> don't we have Spanish. Here we go. Where's the Spanish I hope people? They what I preached tonight. No, they, they didn't. didn't. That's English. good for them. Well, they're sure feeling it. <laughs> so ask her, what does she want the Lord to do for me? <laughs> I'm going to check the camera. <laughs> Emotional injury, huh? Oh, Lord. I got a nice big memory card in. Baptized with love. Oh. Oh. Baptized with love. See, now we couldn't even see if she was doing a full plank or not. I'm surprised with what, people, what God's doing for people tonight. How many tonight? tonight sensed his presence so precious? Then lift your hands no. and ask him to no, I didn't increase know. it. I, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I to sensed the presence of volume of the piano up, please. Because <laughs> he will. Yeah, she's doing the twitch now. Oh yeah, that's kind of. See that kid there with the red, what is t-shirt or whatever is wearing. <coughs> yeah, yeah, I'm coughing into my microphone for our okay, viewers. Okay. Yeah, I need yeah, coughing into shirt. What's the water? That was a sweater or something. How old are you? Sixteen. The Lord's hand is on you. This kid could be a plant. That's yeah, pretty sad. Yeah. You know? You know that? You feel it. What 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 do you feel? No words can describe it. No, no words can describe it. <laughs> Where are you from? Pennsylvania. What are you doing here? <laughs> My brother brought me here. Who's your brother? Isaiah Galarza. Where where are you? <clears throat> what a future he's got. Oh, that looked like a full plank. What a future he's got. Pick him up a second, Josh. <laughs> What's the point of knocking him over if you're just going to pick him up? I don't know. <coughs> what, are you, what, what are you experiencing? Love. Love of God, huh? Thank you, Lord. You're his brother? What do you want God to do for you? I want a pony. Every soldier wants a medal. I don't. <laughs> I want a pony. <coughs> a what? A pony. You know, a little horse. How old are you? 20, 26. Lord, I thank you for the visitation coming to this family. I thank you for the visitation coming to this family. Oh. I wish you could see his face, this kid here. Get the camera on him. Can you see his face? Get the camera. Come on. Is there any way we can put it on the screen so I can see his face? You can't do that? <laughs> what are you feeling? I feel we're being transformed, like, because I'm a sinful person. And God is just, His grace is, I don't know what to explain. 60-year-old kid, don't get like, he's 25. Why don't you ask God to transform you right now? His power is, is here. Our future can be greater than we realize. Oh, here we go. Our tomorrow can be better than our yesterday. Her. If we simply ask Him to give that to us. Oh, yeah. Can fulfill us <clears throat> when no one else can but only Jesus can and in such moments things happen the, the presence of the Lord is fast. so beautiful here in this room yeah anything can happen oh, it is, it is <laughs> that moment Go that miracles can take place in our life and our future and our homes with our loved ones how does your twitch fast there we go. Lord, we thank you for <laughs> what you can do with us, all of us. We, we don't deserve it. We never have deserved it. We never will deserve it. Only you deserve the glory and the honor. Mm -hmm. We pray that all of us will live holy lives. We will not submit to the things of the world. 
cause us to surrender daily to your Lord and win the battle of the souls. We will win the battle of the soul always, victorious over the flesh and the world. In Jesus' mighty name. I think it's the swarm of bees. That, that girl, who is that sweet girl there by herself? Are you also with them? Come here, darling, come here. I guess they're a family, maybe they're all in family. That's, that's your wife. Okay. I think this is the... Oh, yeah, here we go. Come, come here, Chad. He's like having a <coughs> There's when you know place. you're really experiencing God, twitching around on the floor. Jackson, come here. You, you and Luke, you gotta see this. No, that doesn't look really yeah, good to here. me. You know, this is what used to happen to me when I was young. <laughs> Because you can't handle all the glory that it's like he's in pain. overwhelms your physical body. You don't being know tortured. How, to, how to handle it. There is no way to describe ecstasy in the spirit. But that wouldn't be it. <coughs> right. People can describe ecstasy in the flesh because they've had it through alcohol, drugs, the stuff people do that is completely from the devil. Mm. <laughs> but ecstasy in the spirit cannot be explained. And what would we call this? Because it's beyond the physical world. Mm -hmm. It's beyond the mind. It's nice that he's explaining the thing that can't be explained. It's a heaven <laughs> ecstasy. And we're going to live in that flop. <sighs> You're sure? Guy's still flopping around. Flopping around. Immorality. Let's not allow our families to destroy our eternal destiny with God. <clears throat> now, I'm going to have you take these kids except him. Don't... Don't move that guy. Do you remember when the plague came? Oh. After he had decided to count the people? Remember this part? And he sinned against God because David. counting the children of Israel... <clears throat> guess, guess what this part of the service is all about. I don't have to guess. I was with yeah, you. Yeah, collecting the <laughs> offering. Right. So it's two hour. It's almost three hours now. He's at two hours and fifty eight minutes. And he's going to spend the next twenty minutes talking about money. Well, well he's basically going to get to a declaration of how powerful his kingdom was. Count all the children and the women included. Sometimes when people face disasters, <clears throat> like he did, I have seen this happen in my life. Mm-hmm where I was facing financial woes, financial trouble. Mm. Now, I can tell you mm -hmm. that plague yeah. was destroying the economy of David in his day, or the economy of Israel in that day, to, lo to lose that many people. So in our very first episode, we <coughs> showed him doing this thing where you have two kind of categories of selling. One is to give somebody all the benefits. If you buy this, you'll be happy and you'll have good things you'll enjoy it people will be uh jealous of you whatever it is it's a good thing the other way of selling is a, you know if you don't get this I, you know I, you know uh. selling the message so you'll give money basically yeah so he's gonna he's doing the thing where if you want god to protect you you have to show god that you're worthy of being protected and you show In god you're worthy Using is not at all to do with whatever he's saying. If you just look it up, it was destroying the land. Had that plague kept, kept going. The plague happened because David disobeyed. Simple as that. Yeah, yeah. Israel would have would have gone into poverty basically, but David understood the power of the seed. He knew the power of the seed, and a lot of Christians today are dismissing it because of the abuse of it. Mm. It's been so abused. Seed sowing. Seed sowing. But we cannot dismiss the fact that the Bible tells us over and over and over about seed sowing in times of famine. Twisting scripture right there. Would, uh, would Benny Hinn maybe like to show a passage where Jesus himself told his disciples all about the importance of seed sowing? Because hmm. it seems like that would have to be there, right? I mean, God himself incarnate would yeah. have to i mean t he, he taught he, us how to pray he taught us a lot of things right he would have had to have taught us this most important thing the that, most important thing because he said it's all over the bible and then of course we'd probably hear about it from i would paul would, paul probably john or, yeah. or maybe peter james or peter yeah. matthew in times of trouble 
There's an amazing story in the Bible when three kings came together to fight Moab. The Moabites had been giving Israel 200,000 animals a year. It began with David. When he <coughs> occupied the land of Moab, Moab was paying him back to keep, to basically leave him alone, not to occupy the land, 200,000 animals every year. The king of Moab decides, I'm going to stop giving that to Israel. The king of Israel at the time joins forces with the king of Judah, Jehoshaphat, and they join forces with the king of Edom to go fight Moab. Mm -hmm. Jehoshaphat says, is there not here a man of God we can talk to? So, dear Elisha, the prophet Elisha shows up. <coughs> Now, the kings were complaining, we're going to die because there's no water in the desert. The king of Israel said, we're going to all die and our cattle because there's no water for us. It's a long journey to Moab in the desert. Elisha makes an amazing statement. He says, begin to dig ditches. The water is on the way. But first, prepare with ditches. Why ditches? Because had that water been released, it would have flooded them and, took, and, and in fact, Killed many of them. He said, nowhere to go. Think about masses of water coming at you in the desert. It brings death. <laughs> ditches means it holds the water. Those ditches get full of that water, so now they can actually use it and drink it. Give it to their animals and keep them all alive. But there's a key in that amazing chapter. In, I don't know which one that was. In Kings. It says, when the morning sacrifice was offered, He's the water was released. He might have done it in his sleep. He Elijah says, Dig the ditches, get ready, it's about to be released. But it wasn't released until the offering was given. Ah. The offering released the water. The offering released the water. Hmm. So if you want to survive, you better give an offering. <clears throat> He's not done yet, though. Can, can, can you pick up that young man, put him on the platform somewhere? Pause it to your right. Can can see so come close to the screen. Come to the screen, or if you're holding it on your on your phone, you're close enough. But I want to pray for all of you. I want to pray for all of you in your homes too, that God will use this seed to secure your future. Do you believe that? Yes. Well, you have to, because <laughs> I need that the money. <laughs> one seed, in David's case, secured his future. The plague stopped. The blessings came and continued to grow. Mm. Think about the blood. I'm just so glad he's not doing that seed sowing thing anymore. No, it's because, been so abused. Yeah, it's been so abused. He's teaching, seed sowing, seed sowing, seed sowing. <laughs> he's teaching it the right way. Blessings that came on Solomon as a result of David's obedience. So we're three hours and 11 minutes into a three hour and 20 minute <coughs> healing service. Healing service, which had, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes of, Maybe. of healing which wasn't actually healing at all. It was just claims of healing and people saying that they felt better. Mm -hmm. God Almighty is asking us today to take seed sowing seriously. Mm. But don't abuse it. Lord, I'm asking you, come on, lift your hands and pray with me. Lord, I'm asking you to bless every business represented here and in their homes. Every business will be blessed. And I bless, I bless in Jesus' name, I bless your business. I bless your future in that business. Mm. I bless you with multiplied blessings from heaven. And I declare no financial lack will be in your future. Well, there you go. That you will be blessed with abundance. Mm -hmm. That everything you touch will be blessed in Jesus' name. Everything you do will be blessed in Jesus' name. I'm just glad he's not teaching that prosperity thing anymore. <coughs> you know, he's really kind of gotten away from that. Yeah. That even your mistakes... You know what, and just to be clear, if I was praying for somebody, I would pray for them to be blessed. I wouldn't pray for them to be poor and to fail, right? That, that is... That's totally fine. We we do depend on God. We do ask God to bless our efforts and to take care of our needs. The real difference here is that he's promising people, if you give a seed offering, I declare this something. This is God's promise. It's going to happen. It's God. He's speaking as if he were God. He's speaking <clears throat> right. on behalf of God that you are absolutely guaranteed. I'm glad guaranteed. you pointed that out because that is, that is the focus of this 
whole healing ministry financial success thing. God's going to give you healing. God's going to give you prosperity. God's going to give you success. A great future. A great future. And the real great future is in heaven. That's right. The real great future is And Jesus never prayed for people like this. No, he didn't. Jesus did not pray like this for people. Neither, I don't think, the disciples did either. Again, if you want to ask that God blesses your business, nothing wrong absolutely. with that. Absolutely. What do you want? To, you don't want your business to fail, right? And 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 I'm in favor of people having a car that doesn't break down all the time. I I know <laughs> firsthand how troublesome that can be <laughs> yeah. for my entire adult life. Yes. So our entire yes, adult life. It's not like you have two choices. Right. One is where God's going to answer all your prayers and give you whatever you want, or this other extreme where you live in poverty and you're constantly struggling like crazy and you never have enough food in the refrigerator and your kids go to school with dirty, smelly clothes because you didn't have a, a, enough money for laundry soap. I don't think there's any Christian who would really want you to live in extreme poverty like that. <clears throat> no. But whatever the case... The most important thing is your relationship with God. It's not your material possessions. Right. It's not your material conditions. So, yes, ask God to bless you. Yes, ask God to help you to have what you need in life. But this idea that now you've given an offering to this man of God and you're now promised all this stuff, it's just so wicked. Because the only thing that's promised in this situation is that Benny Hinn is going to make... The money. Uh, yeah, he's going to make all the money. So we'll be protected. Here we go. Protection. God will protect you when you make mistakes. That your mistakes will not bring lack. That's counter. I don't want to say productive, but that's that's not correct. This I mean, is how we, we learn make, in life. We yeah. make mistakes, and it's almost always through our mistakes that we're humbled. Right. And we actually take God more serious. Right. When you're successful and you're getting everything you want, you turn into a jerk. And you don't have anything. <laughs> Why do you need God? You, right. You've got it all. And he, you don't have to be a jerk. You just don't need God. Yeah. But I think I think for a lot of people, it does turn you into a self-focused person, a selfish person. Right. When you get it, whatever you want, it's really hard to be the kind of person that God wants you to be, which right. is to be thinking about others more than right. yourself. So, yeah, there's probably exceptions to everything. Mm -hmm. there, there are people that have been blessed and they're able to turn around and just bless others like crazy. But I don't think that's hardly ever the case. I think most of the time having too much of all the wealth in the world is actually harmful to us. And I think that's why God often doesn't give us what we want. Even your mistakes, God will use to bless you with in his holy name. So I kind of think that's true, actually. But it doesn't mean that your mistakes are going to turn into a huge... Financial success. Yeah, that's could, what he's talking it about. It could mean that your mistakes, God does use to bless you. And the blessing is you go, gosh, you know... I really was selfish when I tried to do that thing, mm -hmm. and it failed over and over again, and God blessed me through that by not giving giving me what I wanted, mm -hmm. and now I'm going to try something completely different <clears throat> and kind of humble myself and think more about what does God really want me to do with my life, mm -hmm. not what can I do to puff myself up and to have a really good earthly existence. Mm -hmm. Lord, I pray blessings on your people, on their families, on their tomorrow. Whatever they do will prosper. And Lord, I pray, no more lack, no more loss, no more financial place. In Jesus' mighty name. Let this seed, Lord, this one seed, be like that seed David sowed that day when he paid Aruna for the land. Let this seed, Lord, be like that seed that they sowed that the waters will come into the desert and keep those three armies alive. The keyboard. It's so dumb. And bring victory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Say amen. Pass the Say bucket. amen. Now I'm going to ask you to go to your seat and sow your seat. I'm going to ask you in your homes to sow it now online. Okay? All of you are going to go back to your seat and we're going to give you an envelope. Did you know that seat was a two syllable word? Sita. Sita. And you're going to sow your seed for your future. Mm. Make it out to no. Benny. For your future. It's, it's for, David sowed for, that his seed future. for his future. Right. So did those three kings. Hallelujah. Do it now. In your, uh, you in, in your homes. Is that camera still on me? All right, I want to make sure there. I don't know what happened to the cameraman. <laughs> but I'm going to ask you in your homes to sow seed now. The information is on the screen for you. You can give on the platform you're watching me on. You can give by going to our website. 
You know what? And if you have a legitimate ministry, there is a time to ask for people to donate. Absolutely. But he does this long, drawn out thing, and every every single time he's going to. Anytime you see him on his show. Yeah. Just go to the last part of the video and you'll see him go on to this long spiel about every seed show. sowing and how, you know, God's going to protect you if you give enough. And, and there's a big danger coming. We just watched another video yep. that he recently did. And he goes, There's this big, terrible thing coming, but you're going to be protected if you sow into his ministry. Yep. And God will protect you because you've put money into his ministry. And, his, and that's going to buy protection for you. And his audience is a lot of elderly people it's really who are on a limited income. Right. And they have. You know, they're only afraid so of the future. Bear, I mean, need, yep. They need to have some kind of security, so they're taking it in And the one thing him. that they have is maybe like a, a, a pension or a social right. security, and they're taking that money and they're giving it to this clown. So they can have security and, they're, and, actually, and be safe. And they're getting rid of the one thing that they have that is, that is kind of like a security. Right. <clears throat> so it's really sad. It's really reprehensible. And like I said, this is now, he's only got five minutes left, and it's all about passing the buckets. Check or my credit card. He's still talking about how to give money. Credit card. Oh Lord, thank you for your blessed presence tonight. Thank you. People for the going in debt to give to him. Tonight, People go in debt to give to a ministry. Hey kiddo, come here a second. Come here. Come. What is your name? Huh? Isaac. Isaac. Wow, Isaac. Now listen, Isaac. Can you can you stand all right? Good, good. While the people give, I want you to pray for the young people. That God will visit their life. Will you? Okay, good. Okay. Or gets off the wrong path because the enemy has taken them off the wrong path. I ask that you bless them. I ask that you guide them. Now. God, protect this young man from mm -hmm. ever being in a church like this ever again. Save him from... From the foolishness. I ask that you lead them to the Word. We ask you to bless these kids. To, that you will show them the way like you have showed me. Amen. Wow. Imagine a 16-year-old praying like that for your children. You want to say something, Isaac? Okay, you... He said no words, so you just sit down over there. He's blessed all of us. He's blessing me right now. So, we're pretty much done here. Yeah. We got, what, two minutes left? Yeah. Bless your... So, it's a three-hour and 20-minute healing service with, I don't know, 15 minutes or so of supposed healing. Well, do you have the healing intermixed with the prophetic or is it just yeah, the healing that's why it's hard to say exactly right. what it was supposed to be healing because right. really there was no actual healing where somebody had a verifiable illness and right. was verifiably healed it was just all people going on stage and you know the power of suggestion is huge <laughs> it actually does cause us to feel like we're healed it's not that you're lying it's that with all the emotion in this hypnotic trance-like state that you've been lulled into, you really can convince yourself your brain is sending signals to your pain and, and making it go away for a time. And you and you really feel like, wow, this is a real miracle because you feel it. And then you get home, the music stops, the, the crowds are gone, you're by yourself, and all the pain comes back. Maybe and, a couple of days later. Yeah, and this happens over and over and over again. Now, we're saying this because of the things that I know Steve's read and we've looked at and the psychology behind it. Um, we're not and, saying... And, and God does sometimes heal people. I was just going to say that. Okay. Because that happened to me twice. And I don't twice. want to interrupt you. Uh, you always do. Which is why... I'm just going to go ahead and let you talk. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead for me. That was a joke. I'm done. <laughs> no, I, I was. And um, we weren't going to a charismatic church, but I still, and I still to this day, do believe God heals. When it's his will, he heals. And um, I had just gone through gallbladder surgery, and after afterwards, the doctor's doctor was really concerned because he saw some tumors on my ovary, and he said, "I know what I saw," and he said, "We're gonna have to go back in there, and we're gonna have to take him out." But before he did that, he wanted to do an ultrasound just to make sure that he knew where they were located. And I remember asking the women in church to be praying, and um, I was praying because I just had gone through surgery. We had two little, little ones at home, you know, 14 months apart, and they were little. And I just, I, I couldn't be laid up anymore. And um, when I went in, there was no tumors. The doctor's like, I know what I saw, but there's nothing there. There are no tumors. And I was just, I was so thankful because God, yeah. in his mercy, spared me from another surgery and we were self-employed and we paid for all of the surgeries yep. so um so anyway i don't ever get 
I hope from us that we don't believe that God heals. Um, and sometimes God doesn't heal because that's, right. that's his will. That's and right. we don't tell God what to do. Right. We ask for, you know, what we need. Right. And we trust that he knows best. Right. And sometimes what he thinks is best is really confusing to us. Mm-hmm. But if we truly believe that God is sovereign, that God is really in control, we can rest in even the things we don't understand and say, hey, he's God. I, I didn't create the and whole it, universe. And if you look at scripture... A lot of it is like, like he weighs so much more on, you know, your promises, your blessing, you're going to do this, you're going to do all these things that are somewhat true. Right. But he's not taking the other portion of scripture that will balance it out and say, you know, we just really don't know. Mm -hmm. We know that Jesus taught us how to pray, you know, give us this day our daily bread. Our daily bread. We don't declare that God's going to give us whatever we want. No. So that, I would really encourage, I mean, I'm sure... I don't know. I really encourage everybody to look at the Lord's Prayer and really dissect it and really understand what that all means for us, because that that's what our Lord taught us to do and how to pray. And I think that's really not looked at very much, yeah. at least by this group here at all. No. I don't think we've ever seen any of these where they pray because the it, Lord's it, Prayer. It doesn't fit with their theology. Right. You know, it doesn't. So Sorry, God. Yeah. <laughs> Your prayer doesn't fit with our theology. Okay, so we're done. So you heard the howling. Yeah. Yeah, they both howl. And it's loud. And I have a thing on the camera yeah. that's where the sound comes in. It's, it's like a compressor or a limiter. Yeah. So I'm not sure how distorted that might be because they she, get really loud. She never howled until he... Until he came along. And then she's like, yeah. I'll go after it. <laughs> yeah. They've been a <clears throat> they've been a blessing. And uh, we, he, we talked that we wouldn't talk too much about them. Yeah. We don't want this to be a dog show. No. <laughs> Although it is. It's kind of a dog show. <laughs> Um, hey, so if you didn't uh, know, we have a Patreon page, yeah. and uh, we make special videos for our patrons, and those are really useful, especially if you want to learn more about the history of the church, the history of evangelicalism, the history of pietism. We're working on one coming up soon where we're going to talk a little bit more about the different aspects of how psychology kind of explains human behavior and how we tend to be kind of like sheep who just follow after leaders. And it actually explains a lot of why we see bad things happening in churches. It's not all the devil. It's us just being dumb and uh, uh, kind of following after leaders when those leaders really didn't deserve our our uh, obedience to begin with. Um, so, and if you can't afford that, it's only six bucks a, a, a month. But if you can and you really want to have access to that, just send an email at the Messed Up Church. And I have a list of people, and if you can't afford it, I don't. I don't care. That's fine. I just like you to see the videos if if that's something you're interested in, especially the whole history of revivalism and evangelicalism. That's a topic that's really big right now, especially with the Asbury revival, which we didn't even talk about, because I think the whole thing's going to be it's going to dissipate into thin air before we know it. So I haven't really made a big deal out of it so far. Um, but you know, this kind of stuff fit with. Our two-year anniversary and the whole, you know, we just got over 50,000 subscribers. So thank you for the people who did subscribe. Thank you. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. Thanks for your support. Thank you for your kind words and your yep. prayers. We appreciate that. And, and your, your snacks. And Thanks, your Valerie. snacks. Thank you, Valerie. Also, um, we're on AGTV. Yes, I almost forgot. Uh, AGTV has the same video. So there's two ways you can watch those videos. If you want to uh, subscribe to AGTV, it's actually a better deal. Yeah, it is. You get but more you might, for it. But you might get a bunch of shows that you weren't going to watch, watch anyway. Right. So if you just want to watch us. You got it. <laughs> go to our patron thing. No, but, but we're excited. Steve's working on a lot of projects on top of, you know, doing double duty painting. And, yeah. and I actually got a new job. So I'm working from home. That started about five weeks ago. I'm so thankful it's a sales position snowstorms we don't care ice i don't have to drive in it we don't care but i did get sick right before i started and i just can't seem to shake it yeah so apologize for not being on or making or making videos but we're here yep and we really have a lot of ideas in play here but we we'll get to them we will get to them okay (laughs) thanks everybody thank you god bless you god bless you bye-bye the pony I don't want that pony. Basta!
there on your screen. However you need to do it, do it now. Hey. Hey! Hey. Hey! Oh. Uh... Hey.